Hello and welcome back to VTU eShikshana Learning Platform. In this video, we are going to discuss regarding two types of wireless LAN. The first wireless LAN that is defined by IEEE 802.11 project and the second one is the personal area network or LAN. Sometimes it is called as PAN, personal area network or a Bluetooth. We will begin our discussion with the introduction. So, as you know that wireless communication is one of the fastest growing technologies. The demand for connecting devices without the use of cables is increasing everywhere. Wireless LANs can be found in a college campuses, buildings and in many public areas. Before we discuss a specific protocol uh, related to a wireless LANs, let us talk about them in general first. We will begin our discussion by comparing the architecture of wired and a wireless LAN which gives you a idea of what we need to look for say to study in wireless LANs. So we will begin our comparison with medium. The first difference between the wired LAN and a wireless LAN is medium. So in wired LAN, we use say wires to connect the hosts, which sometimes we also call it as a guided media. As you know that, this is what we have discussed in the last video. In a wired LAN, we moved from a multiple access to a point to point access through a generation of different ethernets. So, to begin with, we start, we discussed regarding a standard Ethernet and then we move to a gigabit Ethernets. The gigabit Ethernet in one in which we started using a point to point access which, which is possible with the help of switched LANs, uh, switched, uh, switching concept. But in wireless LAN, the medium is air. The signal is shared or the medium is shared by multiple devices and in a rare situation it is possible for us to create a point to point communication between two wireless hosts by using very limited bandwidth and a unidirectional antennas. So our discussion in this video is however about the multiple access medium which means we need to know regarding the MAC protocols that we will going to discuss in the later part of this video. The second point of compar comparison between wireless LANs and a wire wired LANs is hosts. This is second point on which we will going to compare. In a wired LAN, host is always connected to the network at a point with a fixed link layer address between to its network interface card. But it does not mean that host is not movable. Host of course can move from one point in the internet to another point. But in this case its link layer address remains same. Its network address network layer address will change. But in wireless LANs, the host is not physically connected to the network. It can move freely and can use a services provided by the network. Therefore, the mobility in a wired LAN and a wireless network is totally different issues. So, we will try to clarify regarding this in this video. The third point of comparison is isolated LANs. isolated LANs. The concept of this isolation is different in wired LAN from that of wireless LAN. The wired isolated LAN is set of hosts connected through a link layer switches. But whereas in a wireless LAN, 
which we call it as ad hoc network uh, so in which the set set of hosts communicates freely with each other but here that concept of link layer switch does not exist this is shown over here in this figure so you see in this case the isolated lan where a switch is used to connect a different hosts so this we call it as a switched lan or a isolated lan which is created with the help of the switch but whereas in ad hoc network we don't use that concept of a switch so switch is not used over here to interconnect these hosts so they are capable to communicate with each other with the help of the antennas that are provided on these wireless hosts next point say is connection to the other networks a wired lan can be connected to another network or a internet network such as internet using the routers but whereas the wireless lan can be connected to the wired infrastructure network to a wireless infrastructure network or by using another wireless lan the first situation is one that so which is shown over here okay so we are trying to connect the wireless network with a wired internet network and in the uh, and in the second case so this is a connection which is shown for the wired lans and this is for the wireless lan which is trying to be get connected to the other networks either with the help of another wireless lan so this infrastructure part is a uh, sometimes another wireless lan or so with the help of wired infrastructure network will try to be get connected with the another network next is the characteristics there are several characteristics of wireless lan that are that either do not apply to the wireless lans or the existence of which is neg negligible and can be ignored we discuss some of these characteristics uh, to know regarding the wireless lan protocols the first characteristics that what we will going to discuss is attenuation the strength of electromagnetic signal decreases rapidly because that signal disappears in all direction i mean uh, dis uh, it distributes or it it propagates in all directions only small portion of it reaches the receiver the situation become worse with the mobile senders that operate on a batteries and normally have a small power supplies so basically this is attenuation is mainly because of the lot of signals interfere with the signal that is getting transmitted because the medium is open for everyone to transmit the signals and the signal one which is transmitted by the device it gets propagates in all directions the second point here is the interference so the receiver may receive a signals not only from the only one intended sender but it also gets the signals from different senders if they are using the same frequency band this leads to a, a increase in noise signal sometimes the signal to noise ratio will going to become say very low okay so this leads to a say loss of information the third important characteristics that we need to know regarding wireless devices is the multipath propagation the receivers may receive more than one signal from the same sender because of electromagnetic waves that can be reflected back from a different obstacles such as walls grounds or objects this results 
in the receiver to receive some of the signals at different points say for example this is the receiver this is a building and this is a sender in case as i said in a wireless environment the sender signal will travel in all directions so the signal one which is reaching the receiver okay so the same signal may come back to the receiver through a some different ob obstacle so this is my tall building through which once a signal hits to it it will reflect back and it will uh, will assume that it is headed towards the receiver and when we look at the time at which the reflected signal reaches the receiver is different from that of the time at which the original signal that reaches the receiver so this we call it as a multipath propagation this multipath propagation results in the receiver at say uh, of some different phases this makes the signal less recognizable the next what we will discuss regarding the wireless lan is access control as you know that the wireless get an access to the shared medium that is air but the algorithm that is used to share the medium that is air is not csma cd the main reason for not using a csma cd algorithm in a wireless lan is say that wireless hosts do not have uh, enough power to send and receive at the same time because most of these wireless hosts are battery operated operated devices they does not have uh, enough power to send and receive uh, simultaneously so to make a csma cd algorithm to work one of the necessary condition is both sender uh, uh, the host has 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 to have a capability of sending as well as receiving so as a csma cd suggest that say while it is sending it required to know regarding the collision that is happening in the network so that is the reason we insist so the csma cd insist that host has to have a, a ability to send as well as receive the signals so this is not possible or this type of a characteristics is not possible to achieve in a wireless host mainly because most of them are of the type battery operated the second the problem for implementation of a csma cd algorithm in a wireless lan is the hidden station problem so here we will going to discuss regarding this hidden station problem in detail in the later part of the video so this hidden stations are the one which prevents the collision detection when it comes to a receiver and a sender okay so sometimes it creates a confusion for the receiver that who is sending the signal so in the end many a times these hidden stations will lead to the collision of messages which leads to the loss of information and the third most important point in the csma uh, 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 say in a wireless network which is blocking us from implementing a csma cd is the distance between a uh, stations which cannot be say the great if distance between a uh, stations is large signal fading could prevent a uh, stations at one end from hearing the collisions at the other end so if the distance is large enough say for example so if this distance is large enough so signal has to travel and it has to reflect back in case if some collision occurs nearer to the station okay so the signal the collided signal has to reflect back to the sender as you know as this distance increases between sender and the receiver the signal strength the signal strength itself will going to be reduced largely mainly because of uh, this wireless medium okay so by the time it reaches this receiver its strength will be very very low once it gets collided with the other signal okay so that collision leads to a, a signal that gets generated which will be very weak 
and sometimes it is not possible for it to reach back to the sender in case even if it reaches the sender it is a small so small it is sometimes it will not be detected by the sender so this is also one of the reason which blocks uh, say csma cd uh, implementing of csma cd in a wireless lans so let us discuss regarding a hidden station problem to know regarding the hidden station problem consider we'll consider this figure so we have a three wireless hosts a b and c okay so we assume that the b the range of b only covers a not the c and same is the case with the range of c so c is only capable to transmit to a, a not to a b b the station b is not in the range of station c okay but whereas station a is in the range of station b as well as in the station c so with this assumption we'll discuss regarding the hidden station problem so now assume that the medium is right now free and b wants to transmit to a station a we'll assume that these stations they work on csma cd so according to the rule of csma cd b has to sense the medium first before transmission before transmitting the signal so whenever a b senses the medium since there in this case because we are beginning uh, so we are started a discussion with the assumption that the medium is totally free b will start transmitting the signal so now in the middle of this transmission c is also ready to transmit the data now it wants to send the same data some data to a station a it wants to communicate with the a it wants to send something to a a now already b is transmitting some data to a a whereas c also wants to send some data to a a now what happens c senses the medium when a c senses the medium from the point of view of c since c does not cover b the signal that is propagated by a b will not reach c whatever the signal that is sent by b say will not reach c and it is not able to detect that signal now what happens from the point of view of c the medium is right now free so since b is not in the range of c so it senses the medium is free so what happens it will with the assumption that medium is free it also starts transmitting the signal to a a now this signal gets collided at a in the end the a will lose the information that is transmitted by both b and c this situation we call it as a collision of information and this is mainly happened here because that station c is hidden to a station b because both of them they are not covering each other okay so this situation we call it as a hidden station problem so this is one of the main reasons why we are not implementing a csma cd in a wireless lan now to deal with such type of a problems we need a different set of different protocol in a wireless environment so that particular protocol which is used for accessing the medium is defined in a IEEE 802.11 project let us start discussing regarding IEEE 802.11 project this project defines a specifications for wireless lan and these specifications covers both physical and data link layer sometimes we also call it as wireless ethernet it is also referred as wifi in usa and all so it is a synonym for wireless lan ieee 802.11 standard defines two kinds of services one is basic service set that we call it as bss the second one is say uh, extended service set that we call it as ess in a wireless lan 
we come across a two different types of say arrangements to interconnect the networks one is of the type ad hoc another is type of the another another type of network is infrastructure network in infrastructure kind of a arrangement the communication between two hosts that is host 1 and host 2 or any other host for that matter will happen through access point access point all the communication between any two hosts takes place through a uh, access points but whereas in case of ad hoc network we don't use any such arrangements okay there will be no access points so which is mediating the communication the basic service set without the access point is a stand alone network and that cannot that cannot send a data to a another bss and whereas uh, say in this in this architecture the stations can mm, from one network without the need of ap can locate the another and here it is not possible for us to deal with another network but when it comes to a this type of arrangement that is infrastructure basic service set okay it is possible to have a communication with the station one which is in the another bss so that type of a situation we call it as extended service set so in this case it is possible to have the have a communication with the host that are in another bss so for example we have a three bss over here so this is one two three these all are interconnected with the help of say some distribution system or some routers through which we are interconnecting them and all the access points aps are connected to this router we'll assume that say these are connected through wire so wired arrangement so these access points are interconnected with the each other with the help of this router which is controlling the controlled by the some server so now because of this arrangement the host over here in this first bss can communicate with the host in any other bss this we call it as extended service set ieee 802 point also defines a different types of stations basically it defines three different types of stations based on their mobility in a wireless lan so a station with no transition no mobility is either a stationary or not moving or moving only inside the bss a station with bss transition mobility can move from one bss to another bss but movement is only confined to confined inside the ess and the third category station is the station with the ess that is extended set transition mobility can move from one extended set to another extended set so that means we have a three types of stations one is which is capable of moving only here the another set of station which is capable of moving in one ess whereas the third category of the station which is capable of moving from one ess to another ess when it comes to the medium access layer so ieee 802.11 defines two types of mac layers mac sub layers one is dcf that we call it as distributed coordination function second is point coordination function dcf uses a csma ca as the access method that is carrier sends multiple access collision avoidance method for medium access purpose so this is what is a new medium access methodology that is specified by 802.11 for accessing the medium 
by a different stations. Regarding this CSMA CA, we already discussed in our previous video in detail. So, according to the CSMA CA, before sending a frame, a source st station senses the medium by checking the energy level at the of the carrier frequency. The channel uses a persistent strategy over here with a back off until the channel is idle. So this already I have discussed in one of the video. I already discussed in one of the video regarding this CSMACA in a detail. So just I'll go through it. Once a station is found idle, okay, after sensing the medium, say if station is found that medium is idle, station waits for a period called the DIFS period that we call it as distributed interframe space. Then station sends the control frame, which we call it as RTS, which we call it as RTS frames. So basically, this RTS frames are requested to send frames. Okay. So after receiving, say, uh, the RTS and waiting period called SIFS period. So after waiting for a SIFS period, the receiver, one which receives this RTS frame, will send back a reply uh, to the destination state, uh, to the sender. Okay. So that is, that reply will be, we call it as CTS frame. So RTS frame, uh, the acknowledgement for RTS is an CTS frame. So that is going to be sent by the receiver's frame. Uh, the sorry destination frame uh, destination station now the situation is like this so sender and this is my receiver sender receiver so sender senses the medium before transmitting this is a timeline so first sender senses the medium and once it gets uh, approval for sending that is with the help of csmaca it senses the medium okay so after waiting for certain amount of time that is say once a, what once it comes once it gets a confirmation regarding the medium is free it waits for a DIFS time then it sends a frame that we call it as RTS frame so for this RTS frame the receiver will reply back with a CTS frame so reply also so once a receiver gets RTS frame it also perform this uh, it also execute this CSMA CA so that means it also senses the medium before sending a CTS frame and uh, if a medium is free it waits for a certain SIFS time and then it sends a CTS frame. So CTS frame is an acknowledgement for RTS frame. So request to send and say clear to send. CTS means clear to send. So first these two frames gets exchanged between a sender and receiver. So which creates a say a path for transmission from sender to a, a receiver so that means so once a sender gets a cts frame it waits for again sifs time so again waiting period here is short frame uh, short inter interspace frame time and then it starts sending the data frame to the receivers then destination will send back a acknowledgement for this send frame again sorry destination that is receiver sends a acknowledgement for data frame after again waiting for a sifs time so this is if it is a data frame okay so this will be an acknowledgement for data frame so again that back off from a transmission and detection of a collision everything is based on this acknowledgement if acknowledgement does not reach the sender within the timeout period sender will conclude that frame has not reached the source i mean receiver so 
it will back off from transmission with the help of binary back off algorithm again it will make a new attempt for transmission of the data we will see to this in a detail over here so that just now what i have discussed i am just showing it over here so first sender sends rts for that the acknowledgement will going to move from a receiver side to a sender side as i said this is a wireless environment this R cts will not go only in one direction same is the case with rts so uh, here in this figure we are showing that rts is only moving towards the destination it does not mean that it is only heading towards the destination it also goes in all directions so this rts will also reach the stations which are in the range of source so that means they will also come to know regarding that station a wants to start transmission of its data after this rts frame so that means the stations which are in the range of this source can also come to know regarding the transmission of a with the help of this rts and the stations which are in the range of b i mean uh, destination which are not covered by the source which are not covered by the source will also come to know regarding the transmission or the communication that is happening between source and the destination with the help of cts frames now see this cts frame is getting conveying the information regarding the communication between this source and the destination to uh, other stations that is these two stations which are not in the range of source by this method we uh, this this whole arrangement is to convey the information to all the stations or which are uh, which are all the stations that are in the range of the source and a destination that means all the stations which are in the range of source will come to know with the help of rts and all the stations which are in the range of destination are uh, come to know regarding the communication with the help of cts by doing so you are blocking other stations from transmitting during this time so next one more important concept which is used over here is nav that is network allocation vector so this network allocations uh, vector okay uh, say is a kind of a data uh, is a kind of a data which conveys the information regarding how much time a source and a destination will going to occupy the medium for their communication so by doing so you are helping the other stations to save their battery say from say unnecessarily involving in detection of the medium so you are the source and the destinations they are conveying the other stations with the help of this nav that how much duration they will going to occupy this channel so during so that much time these stations will not make an attempt to sense the medium so which helps them to save the battery basically this idea of using this rts and a cts is to avoid the collision of actual data frames so it does not mean that there will be no collision in this type of a protocols so the the collision in this case happens uh, this in csma ca kind of a protocol the collision of only control frames happens not the data frames so bef during the time of negotiation there is a possibility of collision of this rts and a cts or uh, either rts or a cts frames so which will eventually leads to a say blocking the source and the destination from going to a further communication so this type of arrangement helps us to avoid a collision of data frames and it also helps us to solve the problem of hidden station problem basically as i said these handshaking signals that the rts and cts will going to be conveying the information to the all the stations that are range of uh, that are in their ranges so indirectly you are conveying the message uh, to other stations which leads to a solving of a problem of hidden station problems that what we have discussed 
in the previous slide there is a one more a kind of a access method that is called as a point coordination function so this point coordination function uh, pcf is a optional access method that can be implemented in an infrastructure network mainly in infrastructure network not in ad hoc networks so uh, it will be implemented on the top of basically a dcf just now what we have discussed is a dcf which is called as a distributed coordination function so this pcf will be implemented on top of dcf this is shown over here okay so it will be implemented on the top of pcf okay so when we talk of pcf pcf has a centralized contention free polling access method this also we have discussed uh, during a random access discussion techniques okay different access method techniques in one of the videos we discussed regarding this access method also so where uh, say in this case as i said uh, that pcf basically it is a contention free protocol okay so where uh, access point performs a polling of for a stations that are capable to be uh, capable of polled okay so by using some kind of a tokens and all stations are polled one after the another here and the access point checks which is which wants to send a data and all okay so this is how that pcf is implemented now basically in uh, say infrastructure kind of a arrangement to give a priority to a pcf on dcf okay so we use one more say that interframe spacing concept that is pifs pifs that is point coordinated uh, uh, coordination function interframe space which is a smallest compared to all other interframe spaces so this indirectly this arrangement is indirectly to give a more priority to a pcf this we can understand it very clearly from with the help of this figure okay so in this figure how exactly the pifs has a more priority i mean pcf has a more priority because of pif has been shown over here due to the priority of pcf over a pcf stations that may use only dcf may not gain an access to the medium to prevent this the repetition interval has been designed to cover both contention free pcf and a coordination based dcf traffic the repetition interval which is repeated continuously starts with a special control frame called a beacon frame which is shown over here uh, when a station here the beacon frame they start their nav for the duration of which the contention period of the repetition interval during this repetition of interval the point coordinator uh, the the point controller can send a frame and receive the data and send acknowledgement and receive a acknowledgement or do the combination of these two at the end of this contention period uh, i mean at the end of this contention free period the point coordination function the pc point coordinator sends the cf that is contention free ends okay cf end frame to allow the contention based stations to use the medium so basically the cf frame will indicate that contention free communication is over now it allows the other stations to access the medium using dcf function this is how that pcf and a dcf they coexist with each other now we will see the details of the frame format that is defined by ieee 802.11 for this type of a communication so the frame format of 
IEEE 802.11 is shown over here. So it has the following fields that is first one is FC field that is frame control field. This field is two bytes long and defines the types of the frame and some control information which I'll going to discuss it in the later uh, later part. Okay, so these are the different control informations what it carries. I'll going to discuss regarding these things in a detail. Uh, so this is all this information will be completely uh, part of these two bytes. Okay, so all these are part of this FC. Okay, so that means two bits are protocol version. Okay, the cur current version of the protocol is zero. That is defined over here. Next is type. So the type of information that is whether it is a management information, control information or the data information is going to be defined by next two bits. Either they will be 00, zero or 01 or 10. Zero. So 00, zero indicates say if these two bits are 00, zero, it indicates this frame is of the type management. If it is 01, this indicates this frame is control frame. That is whether uh, it is a RTS or a CTS frame. And if it is a 10, zero, zero, if these two bits are 10, then it is a data frame. So when this particular frame is carrying the data, that time these two bits will go to be 10. Next is a subtype field. Subtype of each type. Okay. So that I'll highlight it later. Next is 2DS. Okay. So this two will going to discuss it later. Okay. And from DS, I'll going to define it later. And that more fragments. Okay. Basically, when this is set to one, that means there are more fragments of the same frame may come. And next is uh, retry. When it is set to one means retransmitted frame. Then next is power management. This frame, this particular uh, say field when it is set to one means the station is in a power management mode. Next is more data. When it is set to one means that station has more data to send. Next one is WEP that is wired encryption privacy. Basically it is for the security reasons. Next is last one is reserved. So that is reserved for future usage. The next important I mean next field after FC is D. Okay. After frame control is D field. So this field defines the duration of the transmission that is used to set that NAV value, NAV value. So this is a kind of an indication to the other stations. This field is basically meant to tell the other stations regarding the communication of two stations. That is how much time they will go to involve in a communication. So the stations which are not actually involved in a communication to pass the information to them, the field is used. Next is the address field. Here we use a four different types of addresses. That is address one, address two, address three, address four. Okay. So each are of six bytes long. Okay. And these address values, basically address one, address two, address three, address four, that depends on these, these two fields. That is 2DS and from DS. So these two bits will tell what type of address they are carrying. Next is sequence control field. This field is called as say sometimes SC field. Basically it defines a 16 bit values that is two bytes long. The first four bits of this defines the fragment number. The last 12 bits define the sequence number which is the same in all fragments. Last is the frame body. 
this field which can be between 0 to say 2 3 1 2 okay so so many bytes 0 to 2 so this range ranges from 0 to 2 3 1 uh, 1 3 uh, 2 3 1 2 bytes so this this is the size of it basically it is meant for say carrying the information okay that is data data pad this is the one which is carrying the payload okay next is fcs frame check sequence field which is 4 bytes long which uses a crc i mean crc 32 okay uh, that error dete detection technique means using crc32 that error uh, the redundancy will be added to this fcs field which is useful in detection of errors next we'll see uh, different types of uh, frames that are in a use so basically we need to concentrate on this subfield basically it will tell us how exactly the control uh, different control frames will be identified uh, so as you know that we have uh, two different types of control fields one is rts another is cts and same format is also used for acknowledgement so the subtype field that is you see so we have that fc field when it comes to a control frames the frame will going to be of uh, involves only these many fields okay so this this is a frame format of it is a general frame format where we are including all the fields okay but when it comes to a specific frames that is control frames or a management frame so the number of fields what is shown over here that will not going to be a part of those frames when it comes to a control frames see that we don't need that say uh, information field and other fields basically it does not carry any information so it is uh, carrying only a control information that is the first fc field and d field and the two address fields and fcs field is enough and when it comes to a cts that is an acknowledgement for a rts it has only one address because here we need a two address because we need a sender's address and a receiver's address whereas the cts has to go to a only the sender because the address one is of senders only that address it is carrying okay so it needs only these many fields so uh, basically this reduces the size and in turn the bandwidth consumption of these frames is very very less so the different subtypes we subtype values for this rts and the cts is, is this way so 1011 basically the subtype 1011 tells it is a cts i mean rts 1100 it says that it is a cts 1101 it says that it is a acknowledgement frame now next is the addressing mechanism in ieee 802.11 there are four specific cases of addressing that is 2ds from ds so each flag can be either 0 or 1 and uh, this interpretation of these say 4 addresses will be this way so if this 2ds field and uh, from ds field if these two are 0 0 the address 1 is destination address address 2 is a source address address 3 is a bss id that address 3 field is identified as a bss id okay and address 4 is not applicable if it is 0 1 so address 1 is destination address 2 now the definition of address 2 changes based on this bit bit pattern if this is a bit pattern address 2 is sending ap and address 3 is source and if it is 1 0 the address 1 is receiving ap address 2 is a source address 3 is a destination and fourth one is not applicable when both are 1 1 that address 1 is receiving ap address 2 is receiving a sending ap address 3 is destination address 4 is source so the definition of these addresses address 1 address 2 address 3 address 4 entirely depends on two 
uh, 2ds from ds bit pattern okay so that is on this bit pattern okay so these two bits will decide what type of addresses they are carrying okay one more important issue with the csma uh, this wireless lands is that exposed station problem we discussed regarding the hidden station problem there is one more issue that is exposed station problem so we'll consider a situation like this station a b and c okay so station a wants to send a data uh, i mean uh, station a i mean uh, station b wants to send a data to a, a so as you know that the whole communication be begins with rts as i said we'll assume that the b, the station b covering both these stations so station a as well as station c are in the range of b so with this assumption we'll start so as you know that to begin to begin with the communication every station has to send rts frame so so b wants to communicate with a so it sends a rts this rts frame does not move only in one direction it also moves in a other direction also it also reaches c so when this happens okay so c also gets a rts and because of this rts c comes to know that b wants to communicate only with a a without this rts and a cts it was not possible for a b to know regarding i mean c to know regarding the b's communication pattern okay since a b wants to send a data to a, a it can convey this information to a, a station c with the help of rts saying that it wants to communicate with a, a anyway in case if station c wants to communicate with d which is not in the range of b which is not in the range of b it can communicate freely with b say this this arrangement is mainly because say in case if c is exposed to b okay before sending a data c senses the medium say without this rts and a cts arrangement you imagine a situation where in case if c senses the medium what happens to a c c will assume that medium is busy okay it will back off from the transmission now the cta rts conveys the information to the c that only b is communicating with a so this means even though the c senses the medium because of rts so it comes to know that only b is involved in transmission with a not with d so it can freely communicate with d so if it while it is sending the data to a d the data may also move in this direction which gets collided with this rts so even if it gets collided if it is lost it is of no loss because this particular data is not meant for b anyway if it gets collided and if it is not reaching b is well and good so because its intention is only to de deal with d so the if signal goes to a d without any collision is the only intention of c so it communicates with a d so this idea of rts cts also eliminates the problem of exposed stations so in the next video we'll going to discuss regarding say uh, physical layers of this ieee 802.11 thank you very much